Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to show you how to configure how to configure this board. So So right here we have our development board and I'm just going to connect it to my PC. And uh, power it on. Okay, so now that it's on, uh, and as you can see, uh, both of our antennas are now working perfectly fine. So what's going to happen is uh, I'm now going to test the system and I'll be showing you the result from my console. Okay, so uh, as you can see, both of our antennas are on. So basically what happens at the console is uh, the moment uh, the dark blue antenna is antenna 1 and uh, this one the slightly green antenna is antenna 2 the one here so whenever a card is whenever an RFID tag is scanned in by this antenna uh, it's automatically saved into our database into our flash drive and if antenna 2 uh, reads this tag it should tell that this tag exists in our database so there are many ways you can use this system so for example in a shopping mall so if i buy something with this tag uh, at the counter they can scan it and put it or remove it in our database and then if antenna 2 reads this card and if it finds it in the database then it means it has not been bought or if it's a security system, if it cannot find this card in the database, then it means that this RFID tag does not have access. So the nice thing is uh, you can configure which antennas read, which antennas write, and which antennas can do both. So the most important thing is uh, with this current configuration, the number of sub antennas you can configure are almost infinite. Okay, so, uh, okay, as you can see from my project, I used a soldered board and uh, I made sure that uh, I connected all three of the stripes uh, together. So that means that these three pins, they share the same values. So that way, uh, if any, so if the one at the top, the first row, that's from the microcontroller, Whatever values are going on here are passed on equally to the other two antennas. But only the slave select will determine which one will work or not. Uh, for those of you who use a standard breadboard, I'm going to show you the breadboard connection. But it's still almost it's exactly the same as before, except uh, maybe for breadboards because uh, VCC and ground are here. It means that uh, you connect five antennas and then preserve VCC and ground. Okay, and then the last row, it's the same thing. So depending on how many antennas you want to, you want to use. Okay, so okay, so as you can see from here, uh, this is the same configuration. So each of these will now go to a respective antenna, uh, and you've connected the four main pins. And then uh, you want to remove two more strips and connect a VCC and ground. So you'll be removing uh, two more strips. 
So we are going to have three sets of two connections, each going to VCC and ground. And uh, if you use a standard breadboard, this should be the final connection. I'll draw the schematic uh, for you, of course, but this should be the final connection. So three pairs of fours and three pairs of twos. And then you connect those to the, the microcontroller. Okay, guys, so now I'm going to show you how to set up the code for the program using Mount River Studio. So this is the default IDE when you're working with uh, WCH uh, microcontrollers. So inside the user, the main file I'm going to be focusing on right now is uh, the rc522.c file. And uh, as you can see, I've commented on the pins. So the two most important pins uh, are the NSS pin. So there are two, there's pin one and pin four. So those are the ones we're going to be fluctuating in order to drive different antennas on and off so they always work alternate to one another so when pin one is high pin four has to be low and when pin four is high pin one is low so uh, a good example in this uh, spi1 write register function uh, we can see that the only pin being set if the slave is one it's pin four otherwise pin one is the only one that will be set and hence is the only one which will receive a read indication. And the same thing goes also for SPI read register. So depending on the slave value, that's the one that is going to determine which antenna is going to be read and also which antenna is going to give feedback. So I customized this code to accommodate the slave relationship. So in theory, you can put as many slaves as you want. You just need to dedicate at least one GPIO pin to the slave uh, antenna, and then it should work. And if we open our main.c file, this is the one with our main function where we are going to loop around uh, we can see some of the basic functions for example antenna one read and uh, whenever we read the card so there's also antenna two read so for now since i'm only using two antennas i only have two antenna read functions but they're essentially the same programs you just copy paste and uh, i'm also going to show you this function usrt printf initialize. So this is a function that, uh, this is an input uh, provided by a WCH uh, function. Its job is to help you by giving you a terminal of sorts so that you can uh, give output. So you can essentially use a printf function. And this helps in soft debugging. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, the configuration for this file uh, matches the one we see, like for example, the baud rate, we are going to use 115200. And that's how we'll be able to maintain uh, a communication line and display console output, even though we are using uh, a microcontroller and embedded systems. So this can be quite helpful and I'll show you later on. Uh, because it's an easier way to display your results before moving to actual physical hardware, like an LCD screen. Okay, so uh, once you, so now I'm going to show you how to use this USART print function. As you can see, uh, you can, the communication port is communication serial COM3 and uh, the baud rate matches the same baud rate we used in our USART printf function. So if you turn this on, you can now essentially print to this console, to print to this COM port. As you can see, when I turn on the program and I run it once, uh, the printf system clock function uh, automatically prints the system clock speed, the clock speed of the program. 
So this is extremely helpful when you're beginning and you need to see the visual results of what you're doing. So as you can see from here, uh, I'm going to use the shortcut key to compile and load the program into our microcontroller. Uh, okay, so uh, when you build and then uh, we're going to download to our target board and then when we open our microcontroller, when you open our portal, we can see that the values are now being printed onto our COM transmit line. And whenever I scan a card, uh, you can see that it alternates between which antenna I've chosen. So if I choose, if I hover over antenna one. Okay guys, so now that we've done, I'm going to show you how the results we will be getting when we run our program. So uh, after connecting your USB drive, you download and uh, Uh, as we can see here, it's giving some basic output about what is what is currently happening. So the highlighted line shows the antennas fluctuating and being initialized. And then the last line, that's uh, the reading function and writing function. So if I were to put an antenna on antenna 1, it should write to our database and Antenna 2 should start comparing if I put a card over on top. So as you can see, here, I've written one card. I've put it on top of my antenna and then it gets written into our database. And uh, when I compare it to antenna 2, it will notice the card from the database and then it will do nothing. And, you then, and then you can set flags and events as to what should happen when a certain antenna is uh, gets a value that matches or does not match the database. So uh, once you've reached this part, this is the key part to the end result. So here you can essentially do anything you want. You can uh, you can set off an alarm by connecting it to a GPIO pin. You can flash an LED. You can open doors. So whatever you feel like should happen so for example if it's a hotel it can open the door if it's a shop it can sound off an alarm but the idea is uh you can connect as many antennas as possible i've only worked with two so that's it for this video thank you so much and uh i hope to see you in the future if you have any questions please don't forget to ask if you need any clarifications or source code. I'm more than willing to give it to you. So goodbye.